Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter Joseph here for video number two. On your late Monday night, April the 8th, 2024, or if you're watching on the replay, or from another time zone, or tomorrow, it is now April the 9th, 2024. Thank you all for watching right here on the main channel, Killer of Demons 669. And as always, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, like the video. Hit the subscribe button down below on this channel and my other channels as well. Down in the description box below. Share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, if you dare. And uh, don't forget to... That's something in my ear, sorry. And don't forget to tap and slap that bell to on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. Because if you do, well, we all know what happens. You missed it, you missed it, and you pretty much SOL, and it, we all know what that means too. So, But it is what it is, and if you don't know what SOL means, look it up. And that's pretty much it for that. And if, like I said, if, you, if you're new here, welcome to the party, pal. We hope you enjoy the ride, and uh, leave a comment if you wish, but don't leave stupid comments. You get automatically blocked, and you're out of here. So, keep it moving if you don't want to be here. Get out of here. Go do something else with your life. Instead of being a boring schmuck. That's uh, pretty pretty much it for that. But, but if you're new here, you like what you see, smash, smash that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up. And share the video with everybody you know and all over the internet. And don't forget to, once again, tap that bell. And welcome to the party. We hope you enjoy the ride. And that's uh, pretty much it. No, 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 no. And we move on with that. Alright, enough about that. Boo! Funky! Hope everybody had a great Monday. Coming off WrestleMania weekend. We're all tired. And everything. If you've been in Philly for the entire week. Uh, last, all last week. And this weekend, and then you went to Raw tonight. Hope you have a great uh, get some get some sleep. If you're traveling tomorrow, I mean, have a good flight wherever you may be going. And uh, hope you had some memories going to WrestleMania 40. And now, save up that money for WrestleMania 41 in Minnesota. But please bring a winter jacket. It's going to be cold there. Trust me, it will be. It will be cold, snowy, bleh, there. But at least you'll be warm inside. Because it's a dome. So we got that. But that's April 2025. But we'll worry about that later. And that's that. Alright. Starting the new week. And with the first... Raw After Mania, the ever-popular Raw After Mania, and this is your official Monday Night Raw After WrestleMania Review for April 8, 2024. We are emanating for the final time, well not ever, but for the final time in the span of a couple days, from the Wells Fargo Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Alright. So the SmackDown is coming Friday night in... In Detroit. That's Detroit, Michigan. Or as uh, us rockers, you know, us metal gods would say, Detroit Rock City! So we got all that. So that's coming up this Friday night. Cody will be on the show. Uh, Bailey... Give me a hug. We'll be on the show as well to uh, celebrate her uh, SmackDown Women's Championship again over EO. I think EO will be pissed and want that rematch. But we'll see what happens with that and a whole lot more this Friday night on SmackDown. Like I said, from Detroit Rock City. And that's uh, pretty much it. But tonight was... Started pretty good. First hour was commercial free, but we didn't. The first 45, 46 minutes 
we're, ba we're basically Cody, Hunter, The Rock talking up a freaking storm, as always. Can we cut his mic, please? I, I mean, The Rock's always great to see, but he talks too goddamn much. I mean, I do, but I don't talk for like, I mean, I talk for two hours. I'm doing a review, but he talks and talks and talks. For 45 minutes to almost an hour. I mean, shut up already, Dwayne. Get to the point of the fucking promo. I know the fans are booing your, your fucking ass. Half the time, you're give, basically giving you Dominic, Miss Dominic Guerrero as a heat. No wonder it lasted 45 minutes. Because the fans went, shut up! But it's Philly, what do you, what do you expect? Those schmucks in Philly. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, before you start, uh, I got one thing to say. Hey, JD! Chop this, motherfucker! <laughs> Mets barely won that game. Eight to seven tonight. Barely. Because that bullpen stinks. <sighs> but, barely won that game, but the start, the start of the game, Brandon Fighting Nemo! Five RBIs, two Dick shot home runs. Just amazing. That's great. So the Mets uh, get the win. So another winning streak. You gotta love it. I don't know if they're gonna get, they're gonna get the win tomorrow. They got a flamethrower throwing for the uh, for the Braves tomorrow. And uh, Hauser, not Doogie Hauser, but Hauser is picking tomorrow for the Mets in. Hot Atlanta, but we'll see what happens with that. I'll be shocked that the Mets win three or four in that in that series. It'll be nice, but we'll see what happens with that four game series. And then they uh, come home for uh, Kansas City, the Royals, and then I believe next week, starting on Monday, next Monday, I should say, uh, they play the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Buckos, and. Congratulations to the Yukon Huskies, the men's team, back-to-back -back NCAA titles. Damn, I wish I played the NCAA pool this year. Damn it! I would have won a lot of money. Not the, the brackets I would have won, but... Cause you know, I, I, I only won once, and that was like way long ago when um UNC won back in 2000. I think it was 2005 or 2006. I won the office pool. Yeah, when I was in in college, uh, in Brooklyn College Radio. We won, I won the office pool, so. And they got free lunch! And money, too, so. Not a lot of money, but. It is what it is. Last year, I, I picked UConn to win. I won. <laughs> so. I, I didn't play it this year. Just didn't feel like it. But. Could have won a lot, a lot, of, a lot of money with that. Not a lot of money, but, you know. But it is what it is. But to the UConn men's basketball team for UConn! University of Connecticut. Good job, guys. Back-to-back -back NCAA titles. You gotta love it. And as far as the women go, they lost on Sunday to South Carolina. So, it is what it is. That's that. But at least they beat Iowa. That was a... They, they won on a really shitty call. Moving screen call to end the game. That was just stupid. That was bad. But. It is what it is. The referees suck. In any sport. Even, even in the sport of professional wrestling. You know they suck. A lot. But that is what it is. Alright. So let's get to Monday Night Raw. For tonight. And Raw After Mania, like I said, sort of okay, and it kind of dipped a little bit. Not much wrestling. I think it was like four or five matches, but a lot of progression going into Backlash, where we're gonna pick, uh, gonna be in France on May the fourth. Be with you, two thousand twenty-four. So we're gonna we're starting the the uh, storylines for that. We have a new. Number one contender for Poppy Priest in the... Well, not Poppy Priest in the bank, but Poppy Priest El Campeon. The World Heavyweight Champion. Gonna have a fatal four-way uh, in the main event between Jay Uh 
So, Ricochet, I mean Ricochet, Drew McIntyre, and Big Bronson Reed. Uh, we had that. We heard from, uh, we're going to hear from Cody in a second. Uh, also, we had Jay Cargo on the show. Uh, and some NXT superstars. Well, we'll get to those two people in a little bit. But we start off the show, and we start off the new era, or the Renaissance era, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, with the C, the CEO of WWE, and that is the game, Paul Triple H the Vec Hunter. So Hunter comes out, and right even before he gets gets on the mic, the fans are like, "Thank you, Hunter." So, so Hunter says, I came out here to thank the fans for a, a very special WrestleMania. One of the best. Not the best, but in the, in the last five years, I think it's the best. But, I mean, 35 was okay. New York, that was pretty good. Kofi Mania, you know, shit like that. 36 was pfft, boring. Pandem that, the pandemic era. Uh, Pay-per-view. Which I thought was ridiculously dumb. I didn't really like it that much. 37 was okay. Bring back the fans. But, you know. It was raining half the time. So, I mean, it was... I mean, 37 was okay. 38 was uh, was okay. Not great. Uh, 39, last year's WrestleMania, was pretty decent. But 40 really should have been just night 2. Night 2 was amazing. Amazing. Night 1, not so much. And uh, check out my uh, my first video of the day when I gave my final overall thoughts, you understand? Uh, about WrestleMania Night 1 and a little bit of part, uh, and, uh, and 2. So give my overall thoughts about that. Uh, talk about Roman a little bit. And uh, just check it out. Link down below in the Gobbly Gook. And that's uh, pretty much it. All right. So, Cooper X then says, It was the greatest WrestleMania of all time by every metric and standard. And he thanked the fans again. And then he's like, Welcome to Monday Night Raw. Look at that. So, uh, he says, uh, so This is a new era. And now he's going to bring up the man who will lead us into the new era and beyond. And that is the new Undisputed WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion of the World, Cody! MDK only Cody! I'm not gonna ever acknowledge you, bitch! Wait. Alright, so Cody comes out, shakes hands, shakes hands with Hunter, and then Hunter raises his hand. They, they continue to celebrate. The fans are like, you deserve it! No, you don't! But anyway, Joe Drake's then once again, congratulates Cody, says you deserve the belt, and says the WWE set an attendance and gate record Monday night. And for what Pack Macri said, too, for the entire weekend, meaning SmackDown, NXT, Stand and Deliver, Night 1 and 2, and tonight's Raw, two, over 200,000 people came out. That is amazing. You don't see, w, uh, you don't see AEW doing that ever. <laughs> But it is what it is. Uh, so Triple H says, Some guys at the studio made something special for Cody. So we get this beautiful video package. Which brings Cody to tears. Because he's a crybaby bitch. And then Triple H hugs him again. Says something in his ear. You suck. No, he said that. Uh, Cody puts the title down. Kisses the belt. Ew. Uh, and then... He's crying up a storm again. Ask the crowd's like, So, what do you want to talk about? Well, not you. How about that? How about you just get it out the ring and shut up? And then Cody's like, Hey, Samantha Irvin, can you introduce me again? She does that. You know, big ups to Samantha Irvin. Great, announce, great ring announcing uh, for WrestleMania Night 1 and 2. And got praised by the legend himself, Michael Buffer, I mean, if you get praise from Michael Buffer, or as, as I call him, Michael Buffet, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're going places, you get, you get recognized by the legend Michael Buffer, 
Let's get ready to suck it! I mean, rumble! He's a legend. I mean, his son's a legend, too. It's showtime! No, not Sting, but it is what it is. Anyway. Uh, so, Cody X, Samantha Irvin are introduce him again. And then he looks back on Ro the Raw after WrestleMania two years ago when he stated that his dream of winning the world title. And now it's become a reality. He says he and the fans are standing on top of the mountain. And brings up Roman. Gives him some credit. Thank you. Yeah, give him his flowers, damn it. Calling him perhaps the most important superstar of this generation. He is. He thanks Roman and says he was destined to defeat him. Destined my ass. Should have been Braun Breaker. Just saying. Um, anyway. And the fans are like, thank you, Roman. Yeah, now you say it. Now you say it. Why don't you say it after the fucking match? Morons. But yeah, now the fans really now acknowledge Roman. He'll be out till SummerSlam. So. Oh, he's not going back at SummerSlam. Watch, he comes back at SummerSlam. And I said it last night. And I said, I'll say it again. Roman is taking off, taking off until SummerSlam. And same thing with The Rock. As I'm going to get to in a minute. Rock is taking some time off to film his garbage movies. Then he's going to come back, face Cody at SummerSlam for the, the Universal title. And he just says he's about to win. Roman Reigns comes out and helps Cody beat, beat The Rock to get his win back from... Night one, so Cody will beat The Rock, retain the belt, and then from there, we're going to get from August the 4th through all this year and going into Royal Rumble and going into WrestleMania 41, we're going to get a bloodline civil war between Roman, Cody, I don't know about Seth Rollins, and... Uh, Everybody, you know, it's going to be insane. Ro with Roman, Rock, maybe Cody, maybe Punk, who knows. But, WrestleMania 41, mark it down. Roman versus The Rock. Not for the title, doesn't need it. Never did need it. But it's going to be for the, the title of Head of the Table, Tribal Chief, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to get that starting after SummerSlam. Because Roman will be back at SummerSlam. You heard it first. And when it happens, I'll thank you can thank me later. But uh that's something. Give me my give me my flowers. <laughs> but I digress on that. Uh and then Cody brings up footage of his daughter Liberty. As he talks about his why do I wrestle on this and that. And then we see her cutie patootie. He's like, Daddy, finish the story! You got to finish the story, Daddy! And he says he goes to work to fight as a champion in the main event. And he knows that the line is now behind him. He says he was once undesirable. He was dashing. But he is now undeniable. And he is now the new Undisputed WWE Universal Champion of the World. And then we hear, If you smell! With the final boss. is cooking. So, The Rock comes out, carrying the people's title, and stands across from Cody, he's trying to get, trying to talk, the fans are like, booing him out the window, and The Rock says, I came out to give you your flowers, and then he, he talks, talks about, he's like, oh, you, you sold out, the, you know, blah, 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 20,000 pieces of trailer park trash, stuff like that. And then the crowd starts, you know, dimming down a little bit. And uh, Cody raises his belt. Yay! And then Rock's like, oh, hold on my belt. Boo! And says the same line again. I came out here to give you your flowers. Uh, and he says, you did it. You beat my cousin, Roman. And looks back at, at, on, Co on whooping Cody's candy ass like a dog. 
wakes up Cody's mom, Mama Rhodes, says Cody's father in he uh, Dusty in heaven. Dusty Rhodes, baby, dream baby. Had a smile on his face when he won. Says that Dusty was his hero. Talk about, he talked about his dad as well. Uh, the Rock repeats that Cody did it. Now he has a new title. Brings up his own belt and asks Cody, can I hold your belt? You can hold mine. So they exchange belts. I was like, oh, oh, here we go. Rock says, I love wrestling and I love holding titles, but I never held this one. Hypocrite. You did hold the WWE title at one point. You forgot? I think Rock had a senior moment because he forgot. Remember when you beat Punk? Remember when John Cena won it? That was the WWE title, moron. You know, it was the spinner belt, but... Still the WWE title. Whether you like it or not. And, um, blah, blah, blah. And, uh... So they exchange, exchange belts, and Cody's like, oh, this is nice. Uh, says, says, Cody, this feels right. Uh, then they get the belts back to each other. Rocky thanks Cody and says, I have to go away for a while to do my crappy movies. But I don't want to go right now. So Rock goes, I made wrestling cool again, as did you, Cody. He says, when I come back, I'm coming for you whether you're champion or not. And Cody's like, I'm looking forward to it. And then Rock's like, uh, Rock reminds Cody that he beat him on Saturday. He tells Cody that their story has only just begun. And then Cody's like, hey, you're my boss, right? You're the people's champion. So that means... That means I'm your champion since you are part owner of TKO. And Rock's like, yeah, you're my champion. I'm the boss. You're my champion. I have to give Coat, you know. It's like, so, so, uh, Coat's like, well, oh, I'm their champion too. I mean, the fans. And then Rock's like, before I go, I have to give you something. Put something in Cody's hand. I don't know what it is. And Rock tells Cody to never break his heart ever again. And he says, if you smell what the final boss is cooking. So a lot of people are like, what did he put in his hand? People are like, Our actual Rock. Possibly. People talk, people saying money. Some people, I, I even said his car keys. <laughs> it's like, oh, you forgot your car. Maybe he stole his bus and he drove it off a cliff or something like that. I don't know. But from from what a lot of people are saying on Twitter, it's Dusty's uh, watch. You know, his father's watch that, that um, I guess Dusty gave him before he died. Something like that. Uh, but it is what it is, and that's it. But pretty good opening uh, segment, so I give it three and a half out of five stars. But this is, they planted the seeds for Cody versus The Rock. Going into SummerSlam. But Cody's going to have a little pit stops to go on. But we'll still um, we'll still see what happens with that. Here. And like I said, Cody will be on SmackDown. So I think we'll see who Cody's next opponent. Or, well, first opponent is in his first title defense. Coming up at at Payback. And then we'll get to, we'll worry about uh, Saudi Arabia after that. When we get that. So three and a half out of five stars for that. Alright, then we go to our first official match of the night. We have Shinsky Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura. And his opponent is the NXT World Heavyweight Champion after he beat my cousin, Tony D. Still your NXT World Heavyweight Champion. That is the Russian Dragon. Ilya Dragunov. And he comes to the ring. And then we hear from... Mitchell Cole, happy birthday, Cole. I hope you got my tweet. Yeah, I tweeted Michael Cole on his birthday. I don't think he read it, Bucks. He barely uses Twitter anyway. But I tweeted Michael Cole, happy birthday, Mitchell Cole. Sorry, I had to go Chris Jericho there. Sorry. And then they said, you are the GOAT of the mon of on commentary of the modern era. Not of all time. We all know who all time is. 
If you say Jim Ross and, and um, King, you have a point. That's your opinion. My opinion matters more, matters most, more than yours. And I think the best commentary team of all time has to be freaking Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon. That's my childhood right there. You see that monsoon? Janetti tried to jump out the window to escape. Are you blind? Would you stop? <laughs> I mean, I loved I loved hearing Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon on commentary. It was epic. I mean, yeah, Vince McMahon and, and uh, what I tell you, man, uh, Jesse Body Ventura on Saturday Night's Main Events, always great. Uh, Jim Ross. And uh, Gordon Soley back in the day, in the uh, early version of the NWA. Even even Jim Ross and, and uh, Paul Heyman, like in the late nineties, uh, late eighties, going into the early nineties in WCW. Even with Shivani on commentary too, that was great. Not great, great, but you know. But I think th I think the top. The top two, Bobby Heenan and and uh and Gorilla Monsoon, and then Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler, probably one two in commentary. Nobody could touch them. Not even close. Of commentary of epic commentary teams of all time, that's the two that I I, I enjoy enjoy. Now, if you talk about just. Play-by-play -play commentators, I have to go with Jim Ross. And then, I, I put Jim Ross number one. I put... Uh... Hmm. I put Giovanni probably at number three. Number two, I put Mauro and... Uh, no, not Mauro, sorry. Uh, Joey Styles. Joey's amazing. Uh, uh, then, I put... Tony Schiavone, then Michael Cole, and then I probably, probably put number five best man, best uh, commentary guy, play by play, best play by play guy in wrestling. I have to give number five to um, Mauro, Mauro Ronaldo. He's amazing. I wish he came back, but he, you no. Know. But that's my top five play by play guys: Ross, Jim Ross. Joey Styles, Shivani, Moro, and uh, did I miss anybody? Uh, probably put Mike Tenay up there too. But color guys, I have to go with Jesse the Body Ventura. He's just amazing, and King too. Like one, two. It's like tough to put which one would be number one, number two. But color commentator Terry. I gotta go with Jerry Lawler and Jesse the Body Ventura. And Bobby Heenan, too. Bobby Heenan probably be number one my, on my list. And then Jerry the King Lawler, then Jesse Ventura. And then four and five, and number four and five is, I'd probably put Excalibur or even on. This commentary is kind of. Uh, and then me, probably, probably number five, probably be. Hmm. That's a toss-up between, like, you got guys like Pat McAfee, you got Booker T, you know, he's not great on commentary. On color commentary, Corey Graves, I think, will be up there. Taz. Nigel, in a way. You know, I might do a list of, like, best play-by-play -play and color commentators of all time. Maybe, I'll think about it. Well, we'll see what happens with that. Anyway. Alright, let's go back to Ilya and Shinsuke Nakamura. So, the, uh, the announced team actually announced that the WWE, w, bleh, 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 bleh. WWE Draft is going to be held on April the 26th on SmackDown on Fox. And then we'll conclude on, on April 29th edition of Raw. So, right before Payback, we'll have the Draft. Let's see who goes where. And it's going to be with Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Nice. 
So kind of like almost like last, uh, a little bit like last year. So I think a couple of NXT stars did get drafted. I think I gotta I gotta look back at my video on the draft last year, but that's gonna be exciting coming up in about three weeks from um, Friday. We got that. Anyway, this match was decent. wasn't great. Uh, Dragon takes the fight to Shinsuke, suplexes him, and hits the Constantine special. Then Nakamura came back. Dragunov comes right back, fires up, eats a big kick to face, or knee to face. Then, um, uh, Ilya comes back, drills Nakamura with a kick, hits the power bomb, then hits the H-bomb into the torpedo, Moscow! One, two, three, Ilya, Dragunov, your winner. What happened to Shinsuke's push? Holy shit. Right after, right after the whole thing with Cody, went. Going he's going back. He's going back down the drain. And pretty soon he'll be irrelevant and catering, and pretty much probably going back to uh, Japan to retire or, or retire. I'd like to have one fucking title reign for Shinsuke, like a world title reign. Are we gonna get it? Probably not. Probably not. You know how? You know how? Uh, WWE doesn't really like Japanese people during the Vince McMahon era. Now, well, now that Hunter's, you know, in charge, you know, EO was a champ for over 200 days. Great, Oscar and Kyrie have been champs for 74 days now with the women's tag team championships, which barely get defended anyway. Now Bailey, Bailey's got the belt. Rhea's been champ for over over a year now. You know, but been a while since Oscar held that belt. She lost. She had the belt up until last year's uh, so, uh SummerSlam event, and then EO won. Oscar lost to the Bianco, then lost to the EO, then EO lost to the Bailey, and then Bailey's probably gonna lose it to Kyrie, maybe back to EO. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe Raquel Rodriguez. I don't know, but we got that. Alright, so Ilya beats Shinsuke in a match and gave two and a half out of five stars, and that's it. Alright, they're gonna video package on Drew McIntyre winning the world title and then losing it, thanks to CM Punk, to Damian Priest in about five minutes and 46 seconds. That sucks. So we're gonna hear from, we're gonna see Drew later. And we got that. Alright, then we have the Judgment Day. So we have Fiend Balor. J.D. McDumbass and Dominic Guerrero Lassi, Latino Heat. So, they're in the ring and then Fiend Balor says all the haters were wrong and then he uh, he introduces still your reigning defending WWE Women's World Champion Mommy Rhea Ripley. Over one year as champ, she comes out looking amazing as always singing her theme song that we her, we saw live from Motionless and White last night on Sunday on Sunday night, night two. Amazing performance, as always. Motionless and White kicks ass. And if you don't like them, well, fuck you, man. Go listen to Bieber if you don't like metal. Fuck you. Because as D, as my good buddy D. Steiner once used to say, if it ain't metal, it's crap. Pretty much everything else is crap. If it ain't metal, it's crap. But it is what it is. Alright, so Rhea Ripley comes out and says that WrestleMania proved that Mommy is always on top. <laughs> right, Buddy Matthews? And anyway, it's a new era for the Judgment Day. And then Fiend Balor uh, introduces his partner in crime, the new World Heavyweight Champion, El Capion, Damien Priest. He comes out looking a like a million bucks. So he gets to the ring. The Judgment Day is celebrating. Priest gets a, you deserve it, chat. Yes, he does. He's from New York, too. Where is he from? Hell's Kitchen. Great place to be. <laughs> well, well, for, you know, for Damien Priest purposes. But I know, I know a few people that, that, or from Hell's Kitchen too. Not 
going to say who, but I know, I know people. I know people that know people. That's why I'm v Mr. VIP, a very important Peter, because I know people. And uh, that's what it is. Alright, then he tells the fans to all rise for the Judgment Day! So they do what they do. They do what they told. And then out of nowhere, why? Why did this buffoon come out? Our troop comes out. The fans like, yeah, it's our truth! Comes in to celebrate with them. Priest's like, this is not the time. This is not the place. So Truth notes uh, says that I'm one half of the tag team champions. And then we get the Miz come out. The new Raw tag team champions. And Miz says, I don't want to be in the Judgment Day. But Truth does. So I'm like, oh, no, we're going to this again. And then Priest still tells Miz and tells Truth, you're not in the Judgment Day. And she was like, yes, I am. And then Miz introduces himself like, I'm the Miz. And I'm one half of the Raw Tag Team Champions. And then Arch and him and then Arch Truth as the new Raw Tag Team Champions. That kind of pisses off Fiend Balor, who then challenges Truth and Miz to a match for the belts. Hmm. Double champion Poppy Priest? Maybe. Uh, but Truth's like, no, you can't get the match. And says, there's three of us and three of you. So let's have a six-man tag. So he's like, me, Miz, and a man that you can't see. And, and like, JD McS and be like, what? Where is, where is your partner? And like, yeah, we all think it's Cena's coming out, right? The man you can't see, obviously, Cena. So, so Truth says, like, like me, Miz, and this guy. Everyone's every, like, Miz is like, you, you better not be saying little Jimmy. Jimmy! Really? Riley? Really? Riley? Jimmy! Oh, that segment always... I don't know. So anyway, Judgment Day laughs at Truth. And then, um, they attack Miz and... They attack them and then basically leave them laying. Uh, as we get into the next match. Which becomes a six-man tag team match. So the, that segment I gave two and a half out of five stars. Then we go get to the match. Fiend Balor, Dom Dom, and JD McDumbfuck. Take it on the Miz and Truth in a six-man tag team match, which really was a three-on-two handicap match. So anyway, it's also with Judgment in control. Miz uh, gets the hot tag, cleans house, and Miz drops Dom Dom and JD McDoofball and, with a DDT. And then Fiend Batter comes in, takes out the Miz when the referee's not looking. And then they, they uh, all gang up on the Miz. They isolate him for a while. Miz uh, rallies, but Dom Dom takes out R Truth to, to prevent the tag, and he's still in trouble there here. Do, 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 do. And then John, John Cena comes out, makes the gets the hot tag from the Miz, and does what he does his stupid five moves of doom. And then. Uh, Truth hits some spot that, that, uh, in tribute to Cena. And then Cena, Miz, and Truth do, do all the final shuffle. And then all three hit attitude adjustments. And, you know, Miz almost clocked freaking uh, Cena as he was taking care. I think it was JD Mc... No, no, it was Dom. He hit the AA on, hit the AA on Dom. And then as you see Dom coming down, he hits, hits his legs, hit Cena right in the back of the head. So much room there. Uh, and they get this fucking win. And I didn't give two fucks about it. I gave it two out of five stars. And then after the match, Cena celebrates the Miz and, and our truth So, Cena's yearly match. Because, uh, you know, pretty much he's had a, has, he's had a match every, in every every year since his day. But, pretty much. So, yeah, so we see 
you know, Mr. Financial Shuffle, John, John Wiener. Come in, you know, we saw him at WrestleMania, basically helping Cody win after taking out Solo. I was waiting for Solo to come out and get his revenge. Nope. Yep, yeah, so, you know, Cena does what he does. I don't give a shit. Because Cena, John Cena sucks. And we all know he sucks. And that's uh, pretty much it. And that's it. Alright, so, I gave the match two out of five stars, and that's it. Move on. Cena sucks worse than the fucking eclipse that, that happened today. It was, that, that was... It was nice. I saw some of it. Well, I was at, I was at, uh, physical therapy. And uh, right before I left, there, uh, my, uh, my physical therapist had it on, on, uh, on, a, on, um, the wall and everything. They were showing it from NASA. All, like, all happening. The fans like, ooh, look at me. Pretty nice. Pretty. It's pretty nice. Let me put my glasses on. Ah! Uh, it's just a spectacle that happens every 20, 21 years. It's just ridiculous. You know, I get I get out of the place. I'm going to my... my um, I had a doc, uh, doctor appointment after that. And I'm leaving. I'm going down to... Walking down to where my doctor is. And everybody's like staring. I mean, I, I did look up a little bit. And I, and I it wasn't I didn't even see it. I looked up and the, the sun was still shining. I didn't see no dark spot. There was spot, dark spot, but my spot. You know, I didn't even think anything of it. I thought it was ridiculous. I didn't really care. Just another day. I didn't care. <coughs> you know, I heard Wheel of Yuta, uh was part of the, uh, the Eclipse. You know that? Wheel of Yuta was part of the Eclipse. I'm not lying. No cap. Wheel of Yuta is the type of guy that, you know, saw the Eclipse and ran. That's how fucked up he is. He's such a fucking idiot. Not only does he run away from his own shadow, he runs away from the Eclipse. That is sad. <laughs> fuck you, Wheel Yuta. If, if you if you were a fan of Wheel Yuta, God bless you. You're a fan of a schmuck. Wheel Yuta has only one fan, and that's that's the fan in his fucking bedroom that doesn't work. It is what it is. Wheeler Yuta is the type of guy that puts the fan on during the winter. He's he, and he puts on. He's like he's like half naked during the winter. He goes outside half naked during the winter. That's how stupid he is. It's hot. Yeah, what country you live in? If it was in Australia, I, I could say that, but if you're like in in Saskatoon, or wherever you may be, it's cold, but not the wheel you do. Wheeler Yuta is the type of guy that goes to the, goes to the local pool in the winter, and is and is like and he tries to jump in and it's like ice. Oh! Wheeler Yuta is the type of guy that burns his tongue, drinking hot chocolate, and has to go to the ER. Makes no sense, but okay, whatever. All right, not about Wheel Yuta. Wheel Yuta is the type of guy that nobody cares about. Let me move on. All right, so we got that. All right, so after uh, Miss uh, Miss Cena and Truth just bore us after death, uh, then we got a nice video package recapping Big Bronson Reed winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. 
on SmackDown. Then we go backstage where we see Bronson Reed cut a promo and says he wants to break his opponents apart. And he looks ahead to his match and vows to teach everybody a lesson in raw dominance. We get that. And during his promo, if anybody noticed it, there was a lot of glitches. Most of the night, we saw a lot of glitches. And uh, during his promo, especially, we saw a lot of glitches. And then uh, if you saw really closely on the bottom right corner, it said, Hello. And then, uh, like, the lights would go out. There was, like, a lot of glitches during the, during some of the, some of the night. But it's Uncle Howdy, Bo Dallas. So, they're really, I think, you know, they're really pushing for Uncle Howdy to come back. So, we saw that, we saw it last night at the end of, uh, WrestleMania with, uh, some, some, uh, what was that? I forgot. So, something that happened at the end of, at the end of WrestleMania, we saw something. And then we see, you know, especially on NXT, we had that quote from the great philosopher Frederick Nietzsche. I don't know what that is about. So, but, yeah. I mean, they played some eerie music, like, right before Raw started, I heard. From what, uh, you know, because Easter was there and everything. And she was like, what the hell, is the Illuminati's coming? The lights are going in and out. Just weird. But, yeah. We had that, so Uncle Howdy is coming back. And, uh, See what happens with him, and um, hopefully brings he brings in the Wyatt Six. Uh, I hope Killer Cross is part of that group. Him and Uncle Howdy would would make an amazing tag team, amazing tag team, or or a feud. The, the promos alone would be epic. You know, Cross is like, you know, mysterious. He has that Bray Wyatt influence with his promos, but him and Uncle Howdy's promos would just be. Off the wall, crazy. But we'll see what happens with that. All right, so we got Bronson Reed saying, oh, "I'm gonna break my opponents later on in the Fatal Four Way match." We got that. All right, so again, it's two point five out of five stars. All right, then we go backstage where we see Mommy Rhea Ripley and her and her boyfriend Dominic Galeno. What is it? They're flirting and you know, uh. There, there were flirting at one point, and then Mommy scolds Dom Dom for putting his faith in Andrade. He says, you put so much faith in him, and what did he do? He betrayed you. So Dom's like, all right, I'll go talk to Andrade. I'll deal with it. So he leaves, and then Mommy's walking down walking down the hallway, and then a chair just flies in, knocks her, knocks her down, and then we see Liv Morgan. Like, just like, hmm, baby. And then... She starts attacking Rhea Ripley. Then we have like Petey Williams and referees come 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 in to stop her. They separate them. So the Liv Morgan Revenge Tour will begin. I guess we're gonna see Liv Morgan and Mommy Rhea Ripley at payback. Not that Liv's gonna beat Mommy Rhea Ripley, but yeah, you never know. I still think it's gonna be Charlotte Flair. But let's we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. So I get that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we go to our next match. We have Indy Hartwell along with the Poison Pixie herself. That's Candice DeRay. So Indy takes on an old friend of hers from NXT. And that is the new NXT Women's Champion. And that is my girl, Roxanne Perez. Roxy. So... Great to see her on the program. And she will be uh, taking on Natalia tomorrow. <laughs> Boring. But anyway, uh, match didn't last that long. Uh, Roxy takes the fight to Indy. Indy then comes back. Roxy comes back. And then Candice LeRae tries to interfere and distracts the referee. And, um, you know, she wanted Indy to, you know, do something. Roxanne takes, uh, Indy's, uh, well, like, goes, boop, Rowdy Piper poking the eyes, then hits Pop Rocks, one, two, three, 
Roxanne Perez gets her her main roster win, like Ilya did. And um, match was okay. 2.25 out of 5 stars. And then after the match, we see Candice like, I told you, I told you. That's uh, pretty much it. We move on. Alright, there we go backstage. Where we see Jay Uso congratulate the new WWE Intercontinental Champion Sami Zayn. They congratulate each other on their wins at WrestleMania. Jay beating Jimmy on like two. And Sami beating Walter to end his 666 day reign as Intercontinental Champion on like one. So they hug and they do this stupid, you know. A stupid handshake. Everybody's happy. So we got that. Let me move on. We'll hear from Sam in a minute. But after that, we go to Roxy, who bumps into Natalia, and Natalia says, I'll see you tomorrow. And then Roxy's like, Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow on my show. There you go. Alright, so that's like when I gave 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we go to the ring for Sammy Zane's. Celebration as the Intercontinental Champion. Fans are like, you deserve it. And he says, it means a lot. He has been lucky to do some historic things at WrestleMania over the, over the past two years. Meaning, winning the tag team belts with Kev last year. And in the historic reign of the Usos. So he, he did it twice. He beat, he, he ended two historic reigns. The, uh, the Usos... Long ass fuck reign as undisputed tag team champions, and then ended the unthinkable reign well, next to Romans of Walter. Like that, uh, Sammy praises Walter as he highlights his historic reign, and then Sammy calls Walter the best intercontinental champion ever. But I beat you, <laughs> so we got that. Yeah, nice way to rub it in there, Sammy. So anyway. Sammy says, I've had a lot of help from the fans, as, as uh, they always believed him. He knows that seeing his family and Kev backstage. So we got that. It kind of inspired him and everything. And then we see uh, Marcel Bordeaux and Fabian Aitner come out of Imperium. Hmm. So they emphasize, oh, they, Marcel em emphasizes the hard work that Walter put into the belt. And then he says it broke his heart to see someone like Sami Zayn holding the belt. And it says Sami Zayn looks like a bum. And and on behalf of Walter, we are here to make it right. So they confront Sami, they're about to about to like surround him, almost shield style, two on one beat down, but then Sheesh! Oh, thank you! Chad Gable comes out and makes the save. And then we got a tag team match coming out of that uh, right after the break. So, I gave that segment 2.5 out of 5 stars. Then we see a vignette from the returning Sheamus Fella! It's Fight Night! So, he's coming back. I don't know on Raw or SmackDown. We'll have to see. So, great to see the man who delivers... Banga! After Banga! After Banga! So we're going to see Sheamus Fella coming back pretty soon. Can't wait for that. I'd like to see Cody versus Sheamus for the, for the Undisputed title. That'd be nice. Or Cody, maybe Cody versus Drew. For the belt. Hmm? See? We'll see. Move on. Alright, there we go to the tag match. With Imperium, taking on Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. Decent match. Uh, Imperium was in control to start on Chad Gable. Sami gets the hot tag, gains the upper hand. And then Chad Gable dives onto Imperium at ringside. Uh, then they get back in the ring. Gable uh, maintains the advantage. But then Imperium takes control on Sami Zayn. So to continue to beat him up. And keep him separated from Gable. But Gable gets the hot tag. He cleans house. Uh, and then Sammy and Gable hit a double double German suplexes. Not once, not twice, but three times. And then Marcel Butler breaks up an ankle lock attempt. Attacks Sammy. Then he takes out Chad Gable. And then Sammy comes back. Hits Fabian Aikner with an explosive suplex in the corner. 
tags in Gable, and as he tags in, hits hits the hell of a kick on Fabian Fabian Aikner, and then Gable comes up from behind, hits kind of like a box looking uh, chaos theory suplex. One, two, three. Chad Gable and Sami Zayn get the win. They worked well together. I liked it. So it was a pretty decent match. Two and a half out of five stars for that. And we move on with that. All right, there we go backstage once again with Jimmy. Ooh, uh, sorry, not Jimmy. Jay. Ooh, so comments on his big win against Jimmy. Looks forward to the fatal four way match in the main event. And he's like, he says, uh, I want a yeet from anyone who wants to see me earn that title shot. And the fans are like, yeet. So he's gonna deliver a uh, yeet down. I can't say that word, yeet. That's what are you kids these days, you crazy kids with your crazy words. You cap, no cap, you know, shit like that. That's what basically it means, really. Cap. But it is what it is. I mean, we, get, we get that. I didn't give a shit. We get that. Alright, so 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we go into the general manager's office. We see Adam Pierce, the raw general manager. Nicholas Aldis, the SmackDown GM, and the beautiful Ava Rain, the NXT GM, they're discussing the exciting night of action. Note that they put their differences aside, probably just for that night. And then, and then Pierce's talk is like, oh no, here she comes. And we have the resident candidate, Chelsea Green, come in, complains about not having a match at WrestleMania. And then Adam Pierce is like, well... I got you a special match. Now go to the ring. You're going to have your WrestleMania moment. So she goes to the ring. And I get that segment 2.25 out of 5 stars. So she goes to the ring. The fans are like, you fucked up. You fucked up. And Chelsea's opponent is... Jade Cargill. That bitch show. So Jade comes out. And basically beats... beats uh, Chelsea Green in a matter of like 15 seconds with j j jaded And that's it. Jay Call goes your winner and the match you gave two out of five stars. Bing bang boom. Good night. That's it. Just stayed home with your husband. Woo woo woo. You blew it. Matt Cardona. Fuck that guy too. Let me move on. Alright, there we go backstage where we see uh Sami Zayn. Alright, uh, comes up to Alpha Academy. We have Chad Gable talking with the big fat man, Otis, and Akita Sosawa, and the beautiful Maxine, dude. Whip! Uh, Sam is like, hey, can we, can me and Chad talk for a minute? So, they talk, they start, they get into a disagreement, and then, um, Sam is like, I know what you want. I know what you want. Holds up the belt. It says, I will be honored to defend the belt against you, in my hometown of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, next week on the program, and Gable accepts. So we got a title match next week in Montreal. Uh, we're going to see Mo Scoo Montreal Screwjob 3? I hope not. For Sammy's sake, I hope not. He got screwed at the Elimination Chamber. Remember that? Last year? You remember. Some of you do. But, let me move on with that. Alright, so I get that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we're going to go to your main event of the evening. Fatal 4-way match. The winner gets a shot at Poppy Priest and his World Heavyweight title. So you have Drew McIntyre, uh, Jay Uso, Ricochet, and Bronson Reed. So Drew comes out first, and he comes out with a purpose. He goes like storms right to the ring. He is pissed. Gets the mic and says, what happened at WrestleMania last night was some boo fuck it. Bullshit. Uh, and he notes that, I res that he respects Seth Rollins and he went out on his shield. Then he thanks Seth and calls Damian Priest a bondage undertaker. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean... Hearing bisexual Undertaker last night, you know, that was weird. That was funny, but 
Bondage Undertaker? Really, dude? Come on. Come on, stop. I mean, leave the Undertaker alone, the GOAT. Come on, stop. Uh, he says that. He says the Money in the Bank briefcase is a joke. Pretty much. As it, as it cheapens everything he and Seth did. And then he says the world title will be his again. And says that Damian Priest will have the shortest title reign in history. Because I'm going to get my belt back. Then he turns his attention to Sam Punk. Sam Punk, excuse me. And calls Punk a prick. <laughs> And he says he told Punk what he was going to do. Punk was a cow for going into business for himself. And Drew wants, warns Punk, warns that he knows Punk will hide. But from now on, it is on sight. Mm, oh boy. Here we go. Alright, so we get to the match. And um, Kate Yusha comes out next and freaking uh, interrupts, interrupts Drew's tirade. And then we see Pat McAfee going on, get on the announce table. And my co-host like, you better get down. You better get down because Drew just got stormed out of the ring. And I thought he was going to knock Pat McAfee on his ass. And Cole's like, you better get down. You okay? You okay? And then he, like, after they go to break, freaking Drew's, like, throwing a fit, throwing chairs and shit. I was like, god damn. So I'm like, is he actually going to leave now? Because his contract's pretty much up now. And I thought if he won, that means he resigned. But did he? Well, no. Because it was a hard-hitting match. Uh, big part of the match was Ricochet hitting a 450 splash on Bronson Reed on the Spanish announce table. And that broke, as always. And then Drew took, takes control, sets up for the Claymore kick. Goes, three, two, one. And he's about to... About to hit the move, but then someone grabs his foot from underneath the ring, and it's CM Punk, who screws Drew McIntyre again as Jay hits a uh, a drop kick. Then he goes up top, hits the frog splash, and then the spear. One, two, three, your winner and new number one contender to Poppy Priest's world heavyweight title, Jay Uso. So get. We get that. So, match was decent. 3.25 out of 5 stars. And then, after the match, Jay celebrates with Punk, uh, who's mocking Drew as the show ends. And then we see, you know, Punk, like, doing the, doing the, doing day one-ish shit. So, yeah, how's that, how's that elbow feeling there, Punky? I think he's probably going to be clear to wrestle, maybe at Payback, maybe at Saudi Ara the Saudi Arabia show. So we're going to get it early. I thought we were going to get it at SummerSlam. I mean, we still could. But I think uh, Drew is going to be pissed, but and eventually turn his attention back to Damian Priest and get the belt at Clash of the Castle in his home country of Scotland, win the belt in June, and then lose the belt Pretty much two months later to Punk at SummerSlam in Cleveland. And then Punk will in turn probably face Seth Rollins by the end of the year. Because that feud is not even started. That really was was supposed to be night, night, um, night one or two of WrestleMania if Punk didn't get hurt. That was supposed to be for the world title, and Punk was supposed to win at WrestleMania, but since he got hurt, they changed plans. And now they're having a documentary of the behind-the-scenes of WrestleMania. I'm like, that was quick. That's the quickest documentary that's been made in WWE history. I'm like, this coming out this Wednesday on YouTube. I'm like, what? They made this already? That was quick. They talk about how everything, you know... Hunter's like, oh, we got the WrestleMania card done by October. It was 80% done. And they go into the whole thing with uh, the Royal Rumble situation. Coming out of that, with The Rock coming in. The whole uh, media scrum where uh, Rock slapped Cody. And then the build-up to those matches and everything. Crazy. So it's going to be great to see the behind-the-scenes of that. So, so Wednesday is going to be a big day, so... 
You know, AEW has the unreleased footage from All In, and WWE is basically countering that with what's, you know, the behind the scenes of WrestleMania. Nice one up there, Hunter. So we got we got all that. But once again, Jay Uso gets the win, and um I guess he's gonna be taking on Poppy Priest in the bank at at payback. Is he gonna win? No. No. It's just be Oos! Losing to Priest! Just be Oos! Losing to Priest! Basically. He's gonna lose to Damien Priest. Priest is gonna hold that belt to uh, Clash of the Castle in June. So. Pretty much about a month reign. Not a transitional champion per se, but he's gonna hold the belt for about 30 to 50 days at most. Close to two months. Close to two months. Sucks for him, but. Drew's going to get it back, and then he's going to hold it. He's going to hold that belt for two months. So basically, the world title is going to become a hot potato in the next couple months. But when Punk gets it, I think Punk's going to hold it for a while. It, uh, if he doesn't get hurt in that time, when he comes back, and then wins the belt, and then next thing you know, he's hurt, and the belt's like vacant again by, by the end of the year. I'm like, oh, no, that we got to do now. Punk is so fucking brittle. It's just it's annoying. He's had three injuries in a span of about two years. The foot, the foot injury, because he was an idiot and dove into the crowd. Moron. Then I think he hurt his peck after the match with uh with Moxley, which was uh. I forget when that was. I think it was that, um... I forget what paper that was. I think it was All In or All Out. I forget which one. He wins that. He wins the belt from Moxley. And starts, you know, going after the Bucks and, you know, the whole, you know, EVP shit. He gets hurt, then had to drop the belt. And then Moxley regained it anyway in that, that uh... That, uh... Uh, Grand Slam Tournament. And then he comes back again, and, uh, you know, comes back, and he had that, that whole all-in shit, then he's gone, comes to, into, back to WWE after 10, excuse me, after 10 years, he's there, he's there, he goes into the Royal Rumble, we all thought he was gonna win it, him or Cody was gonna win it, and then, next thing you know, gone, fucking busted up, busted up arm, and he's gonna be out so... Probably August, when I think he's going to be medically cleared, and he's going to fight Drew for the belt, and he's going to get it right, right back after an injury, just like he did against Moxley. After the foot injury, he came back, uh, won the title, and then he left, came back with the belt, and then that whole bullshit that happened. It was just, just annoying. I'm the weary real world champion. Uh, no, you're not. Pretty much you're not. Because Joe took that from you, right? But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I could care less. I could care less for Punk and his stu stupidity right now. But, he's had three... Major injuries in the span of a couple of years. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets another one. I will, if he gets another one by the end of the year, going to next year's WrestleMania, get him out. Retire, Phil. Retire, go home, be with your hot, smoking wife, AJ Lee, that ash, and just do fucking boring as fuck commentary. Go go do the go do commentary for the MMA or stay in WWE but just be a commentator. And that's it. Because you get back in the ring again, you're like you're taking another six to nine months or maybe a year off on another major injury. You're like who cares? This guy, this is just too injury prone. Get him out. It's like a foot. It's like a football player or a hockey player coming back. From like six thousand concussions, like uh, 
Eric Lindros. We got like, how many concussions he have? We kept coming back for more. Please, sir, I would like another concussion, sir. Here's, not, here's concussion number nine. Even, even like Pat LaFontaine, the same guy. Same thing. Concussion City. Fucked up his, his career. Kept coming back and back and back every time. Gets a concussion. You think Daniel Bryan? I mean, Bryan Danielson a little bit for that, too. And, uh, I hate to say it, but Chris Benoit. Oh, I said his name. The man we can't say anymore, but I bring it up for reference. But, yeah, Benoit came back from, like, multiple fucking concussions. I think it was another guy. Was it Favre? I forget who it was in football. That had so many concussions. I forget who it was, but... But he came, He kept coming back, and then eventually his career go bye-bye. I think after, the, like, the first couple concussions, like, you know, you might want to, you know, calm it down a little bit, tone it down a notch, you know? And then after, like, four, five, six concussions, you're like, oh, you know what? Put a cap on it. Because you're going to hurt yourself really bad to the point you're dead. So... Stop. So. But like I said, with Punk, I think one more major injury, and I'm like, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it. Punk, Punky Brewster, get out of the wrestling business. Get out. I know you love wrestling like everybody else does, but, I mean, if you had like four major injuries... In the span of like two and a half, three years. I mean, shouldn't it? I think it's safe to say you need better conditioning, better workout regimen, and you might have to tone it down a little bit. So the next thing you know, you'll be done for the, for, for forever. You can't wrestle no more. The doctors are not going to clear you. So I'll have to see what happens with that. But yeah, so Punky Brewster, once again. Screws Drew McIntyre, and uh, I hate to be Drew next week on Raw. I just do. I just do. But that's that. Alright, that ends Monday Night Raw for tonight. And I gave Raw, it was good, not great, but still, 7.25 out of 10 stars. And that's it. Let me know what you guys thought of the show down below in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to hit that bell to not all notifications so you don't miss the next video, which will be on Wednesday. With my NXT and AEW reviews over on my Peter Joseph channel. So a two for Wednesday for you guys. And then Thursday we'll do uh, TNA. Coming back with TNA. Friday we'll do Ring of Honor. And then we'll do Smackdown on Rampage. And then on late Saturday night. Or sun, I'll probably do it Sunday. Uh, Sunday we're taking off Saturday. Because I'm going to a, I'm going to a, I'm going to be out Saturday. Let's just put it that way. I'll be out all the... Most of the day Saturday. Saturday night I'll be out. <clears throat> I was going to a concert on Saturday, so I got that. Um, and then, but Sunday afternoon, I'll be doing my collision review and Battle of the Belts. So get, uh, getting a uh, getting two videos on Sunday, early Sunday before I go out to my my do my errands and Sunday dinner with the family. So we got that. But, so that's coming Sunday, so we move on. So, tomorrow I'll be off, unless something big happens tomorrow in the world of wrestling or whatever. And, um, we'll see what happens with that. Um, and then Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, we'll, we'll do NXT review. And then Wednesday night, Dynamite, we'll talk about the, the, the big footage of the whole punk situation with the box at All In. Hopefully it's not a parody, but we'll see. And then get you through the week with uh, TNA, Ring of Honor, SmackDown, Rampage, Battle of the Belts 10, and Collision. And then that's it. And then we uh, will be be in the middle of April. We'll be in mid-April by next Monday. Already crazy enough. And it is what it is. Alright, so once again, 7.25 out of 10 stars for... For Raw, let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button. And uh, that's pretty much it. Alright.
Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Peace out, rock on, and rock hard with your cuckoo. And if you're not down with that, well, that's too goddamn bad. Because I'm Peter Joseph signing off, and um, as always, we got three words for you. Fuck you, man! And that's it. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. So, until then, I'm Peter Joseph signing off one more time. Until next time, fuck the fuck boys. Peace.